Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today. We bless your name for your people. I thank you, Lord, for all the brethren who are here, brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, pastors and leaders. Lord, I pray new life will come to everyone in Jesus' name. Take discouragement away. And take everything that oppresses, take everything away in Jesus' name. Lay your hand upon everyone. Use your people mightily. And I pray that even the light from heaven, enlightenment will come from your word to everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Raise up a mighty army of saints, of soldiers, of soul winners, of people filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Teach us tonight, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You want to give me a good amen before you sit down. God bless you. you can see now we're coming to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. And we're coming to verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Those are the very words of Jesus Christ. And it is the expression of the love of Christ for you and for me. He came to open the door to the blessings of the kingdom for everyone. You must understand that there are people that can say this, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They can say it with a tone as if we're not pure, we're not holy, we're not righteous. And then they can, you know, point a warning finger at us and say, you know, Blessed are the pure in heart. And if you are not pure, then it's unfortunate for you because only the pure in heart will see God. But you know, Christ is not having that kind of tone. Christ is having a desire that you will see God and thank God you will see God. And he wants us to see God and he's telling us, you know, you ought to see God. That's why he came from heaven to earth so that I can prepare you to see God eventually. And then he says, I will bring you to this blessedness of the kingdom. And then you'll be pure in heart and you will see him. Because Christ is not willing that anyone should be excluded from this kingdom blessedness. But that all should be included. He wants everyone to come from the world and to come from everywhere come from every nation enter the kingdom and then possess the blessedness of the kingdom that's why he said blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god when it says for they shall see god where at a time of prayer if you are if you're pure in heart you'll see god at any crossroad, you're confused. You don't know which direction to follow. If you're pure in heart, God will show up. You will see God. Not only that, when you're tried and tempted, when there is temptation, when there are difficulties, when there are challenges, and it appears that your challenge or your temptation or trial is going to overwhelm you. At that time, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God on the battlefield. Because, you see, there are battles in life. And when you're on the battlefield, you look here, who do you see? You look here, who do you see? If you are not pure in heart and there is battle, you will not be able to see the Lord. So it says, blessed are the pure in heart because when you are on the battlefield, you will see the Lord in ministry. When you are ministering, you know, if you are ministering like a blind man, like a blind woman, you can't see God, you can't see his glory, you can't see his power, it will be a waste of time. But he says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In fact, at the end of life, if there is anything we're looking for, it's like we want to cross from here and cross to eternity. At such a time, we need to see the Lord in his love, in his majesty, in his glory. Like Stephen, 
was about to die and they were about to stone him and he looked up to heaven and he said i see the son of man jesus christ standing on the right hand side of god what a glorious way to go home and blessed are the pure in heart because at that point of death they will see god and then when they cross to the other side after the body had been buried in the ground and the spirit has gone to the great beyond what happens if that spirit will just be wandering here and there and that spirit will be in darkness and that spirit will be caught by maybe satan or by the dragon or by you know all the evils be seen come come with us come with us it will be a terrible thing but beyond death on the other side of river jordan blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God in eternity when you pass away from time and then you understand eternity is stretching ahead of you and then you understand that you can see God now blessed at the pure in heart for they shall see God and throughout eternity as you walk the streets of gold and anywhere you find yourself in heaven in the very presence of God and then you remember blessed at the pure in heart for they shall see God you see this sentence here with the precept this sentence here with the promise this sentence here with the prophecy this sentence here with the proclamation that the old but jesus christ himself is making blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god number one is the demand of god is the demand of god as you look at you want to see god he says yes i want you to see me too but you know if you're going to see me here is my demand you must be pure in heart blessed are the pure in heart number two it is the desire of christ the desire of christ he came to give his life and he came to shed his blood and the reason he is done that is because of his desire he's not willing that any should perish but that all shall come to repentance and he wants everyone he wants you and thank god you will have it thank god you will see god because of the desire of christ number three is the delight of the holy spirit the delight of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Lord Jesus Christ has sent the Holy Spirit to us to win us, to woo us, and to bring us into the very center of the kingdom because he has given us the comfort and arm, and he leads us into all truth and it is his delight that we will be holy and see the Lord. Number four, it is the decree of heaven the decree of heaven that if anyone is going to get to heaven if anyone is going to see the lord the almighty he must be pure in heart number five is the doctrine of the whole bible the doctrine of the whole bible why was uh, the people at the time of now why were they wiped off because they were not holy they were not righteous they were not uh, pure in heart and therefore they couldn't see god they couldn't see the mercy of god they couldn't have any hope in god and then why were those people in sodom and gomorrah why were they wiped out why were they burnt with fire because they didn't have this the purity of heart and then as we look at even the children of israel in the wilderness those people that died and those people that perished in the wilderness why did they perish because they couldn't have this blessedness blessed at the pure in heart for they shall see the lord you come to the new testament and what was christ looking for he wants to make us pure in heart he'll make it in your life he'll do it in our lives in jesus name is the doctrine of the whole bible number six it is the declaration of true christian ministers you're a christian minister this is your declaration this is what you are telling people all around you this is why we're preaching this is why we have ministry and this is what we're telling people blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see the lord they shall see god number seven is the devotion of all saints if you're a real child of god if you're a saved soul if you really belong to the lord here is your devotion here is your dedication here is what you devote your life to that by all means you want to see god therefore you know the necessity of being pure in heart number eight 
the denial of the world the denial of the world the world denies and the world says no we cannot be pure we cannot be holy we cannot be righteous and because satan is giving them this idea that's not possible for anybody to be righteous anybody to be holy is the denial of the world but even though the world is denying this is the determinant number nine the determinant of man's destiny the determinant of man's destiny here is the sentence here is the word here is the message that determines the destiny of man look at matthew chapter 5 verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god the message today our blessed privilege on earth and in eternity our blessed privilege on earth and in eternity three things we're looking at number one the peril of corrupted polluted hearts the peril of corrupted and polluted hearts number two the purifying of converted prepared hearts the purifying of converted prepared hearts number three the promise for consecrated pure hearts number one the peril of corrupted polluted hearts as you let, let me read that verse again matthew chapter 5 verse 8 blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god already as you look at that verse it's talking about some people and it says these people are pure in heart and they are blessed they're happy they're joyful they're privileged they're eternally favored because they shall see god the other side of the coin look up here when you have some people in the house in the room and we say these ones are blessed the implication is only these people in the house are blessed and the people outside and unfortunately there are more people outside i don't mean outside our building here we know we have the overflow outside here all those who are outside you are blessed in jesus name i'm talking about those who are outside the kingdom they are outside the confines of the assembly of the people of god who are cleansed and who are pure and who have been sanctified those who are outside it means they are not as blessed as those who are inside so let me give the opposite to you then bad that is b a double r e d bad band those who are banned and blind at the impure in heart for they shall not see god those who are not pure in heart they shall not see god in providence they shall not see god in prayer they shall not see god if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me in the pathway of life they'll be walking like blind people the lord will not reveal himself unto them because jesus said that if you obey my word i and my father will manifest ourselves unto you and then philip said or thomas why is it you are going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world he said because it's only those who love me and obey me that will have the manifestation blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god the people who are not pure in heart and the people who remain in pure in heart in the pathway of life they will not see god in perplexity you know there are times in our lives something happens you're just perplexed like joe i turn here and there's no helper i turn over here and there's no comforter i turn over there there's no sympathizers and all you comforters and sympathizers you are men of no value you're not helping me at all and then he was looking at that he will see god and thank god he saw god and god changed his situation you'll see god will change your situation 
But you see, the people who are banned, the people who are bad, the people who are blind, and they are impure in heart, they don't see God in the time of their perplexity. They do not see God in power, in performance, and then eventually, if they die in that condition, they will not see God in paradise. You will see God. But point number one, the peril of corrupted, polluted hearts. And you see, the heart is the real issue. The heart is the real matter. If the heart is corrupted, if the heart is polluted, then such a person cannot see God. Genesis chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 6, we're reading from verse 5. Genesis chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 5. It tells us here in verse 5 of Genesis, look at it, Genesis chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 5. It says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. You see that? The heart of the matter is a matter of the heart. That is, here is what God is looking at. It's not looking at anybody's stature. It's not looking at anybody's, uh, you know, posture. It's not looking at anything external. It's looking at the heart. And it says concerning these people, God saw their wickedness. It was great in the earth. And at every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was continually evil look at verse 6 and he repented the lord that he had made man upon the face on the face of the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the lord said i will destroy man whom i've created from the face of the earth and then he goes on to say it's because they were evil in their heart if somebody's heart is corrupted if somebody's heart is perverted, if somebody's heart is polluted, he will not see God. Uh, look at uh, Psalm 12, and I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 12, we're looking at verse 2. They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering leaves and with a double heart, do they speak? You see what God is talking about there? It says they have double hearts. They tell something in the open, but then in the secret, in the private, in their heart, they have another thing in mind. It looks like they're white outside, they're black inside. They look like they are friendly outside, but they are like enemies on the inside. It looks like they are helpful on the outside, but on the inside, they hinder because they have that hatred. It looks like they want to lift you up on the outside, but really on the inside, they want to see how to destroy you. And that's why it says, they speak vanity everyone with his neighbor, and with flattering leaves, and with a double heart. Do they speak? Look at verse 3. The Lord shall cut off all the flattering leaves, and the tongue that speaketh proud things who are said with a tongue we will prevail our leaves are our own who is lord over us but you know the problem the problem is the problem of the heart and you can see that in that verse 2 we're looking at ezekiel chapter 25 ezekiel chapter 25 we're reading from verse 15 Ezekiel chapter 25, verse 15, is telling us that the condition of the heart is very important. The state of the mind is very important. And the corruption in the heart is noticed by God. And when he notices that corruption in the heart, then it says, you do not come into the blessedness of the pure in heart because your heart is not pure. Look at Ezekiel chapter 25, I'm reading from verse 15. Thus says the Lord God, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge and have taken vengeance with a despised, despiteful heart. You see, the problem is the heart all the time. It says it's a despiteful heart to destroy it for the old hatred. It says uh, there are these people who are pregnant with hatred. 
and the pregnancy remains nine months one year three years pregnant with hatred and five years pregnant with hatred they nurse that hatred in their heart they nurse that hatred in their mind and it says over here they want to revenge and they want to take vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy other people for the old hatred therefore thus says the lord god behold i will stretch out my hand upon the philistines i will cut off the cherubims and destroy the remnant of the sequels jeremiah chapter 49 jeremiah chapter 49 we're reading from verse 16 the heart the heart jeremiah chapter 49 verse 16 thy terribleness has deceived thee and the pride of thine of their what heart is a heart is a heart you see somebody might say i'm religious how about your heart i go to church how about your heart i read the bible how about your heart and even say i'm born again how about your heart i'm a prayer warrior how about your heart i prophesy how about your heart i do many mighty works how about your heart i know the doctrines in my head how about your heart is the heart that is very central in the consideration of the lord and it says thy terribleness has deceived thee the pride of thine heart O thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks that holdest the height of the hill though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle i will bring thee down from thence says the lord because of the condition of the heart look at zechariah zechariah chapter 7 zechariah chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 11 zechariah chapter 7 we're reading from verse 11 the condition of the heart corrupt perverse polluted defiled sinful hardened obstinate in chapter 7 of zechariah verse 11 it says but they refused to hack him and pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear yea they have made their what hearts as an adamant stone you know if they say somebody is um, you know adamant rigid disobedient resistant it's not talking about the bone it's not talking about his flesh it's not talking about even the face it's talking about the heart the heart that will not yield the heart that will not bend the heart that will not be cleansed the heart that will not respond to the word of god the heart that will not be humble before the lord and it says ye they have made their hearts as an adamant stone lest they should hear the law and the words which the lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets therefore came a great wrath from the lord of hosts therefore it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear so they cried and i would not hear says the lord of hosts you see that bad heart hinders prayer that polluted heart hinders prayer that corruption of the heart in the prayer let's come to the new testament in uh, acts chapter 7 reading from verse 51 acts chapter 7 we're reading from verse 51 the condition of the heart determines whether somebody sees the lord or does not see the lord in acts of the apostles chapter 7 verse 51 ye stiff nature and uncircumcised in heart old testament adam and heart proud heart 
stubborn heart, rigid heart, unyielding heart. And now it comes to the New Testament and it says, He stiff necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. In Romans chapter 2, I'm reading here from verse 5. Romans chapter 2, reading from verse 5. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, after thy hardness and impenitent heart, or repentant heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. There's judgment if the heart is hardened, the heart is untouched, the heart is not transformed, the heart is not changed, the heart is not cleansed, there's peril, there's danger. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 18 and verse 19. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Having the understanding darkened, cannot see the light, being annihilated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of what? of their heart. See, the, all the references we've been reading is the condition of the heart. If, the, if somebody says I'm born again, the heart will be affected, will be soft, will be tender, will be yielding, will be submissive, will be obedient to the word of God. But if somebody is not really born again, although he might profess, I'm born again, born again, although he might profess, I am deeper, I am higher, I am further, I am holy, I am holier, whatever the profession, if the person is not really born again, it's not the word of mouth that will tell us, it's the condition of the heart. And it says in that verse 18, they have the understanding darkened, and they are alienated, they are separated, from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. It says because, because of the hardness and the blindness of their heart who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to walk all on cleanness with greediness. I pray the Lord will touch every one of our hearts and this heart of depravity, the heart of sinning, and the heart that is hard will be taken away from us, every one of us in Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 3, we're looking at verse 12. It says, take it, brethren. Take it, brethren. Don't be careless about this. Don't shut this off. Don't say, this one doesn't concern me. Take it, brethren. Lest there be in any of you, what kind of heart? An evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. There are people who have even been born again. They are children of God. And they have been abiding in the Lord. But then something happens. Maybe they see other people doing things that they shouldn't do. And it's okay if so and so can do it. And nobody is raising any kind of eyebrow. If so and so can do it. And nobody is calling them to question. If so and so can do it. And nobody is challenging them. Them. Why am I the only one that is righteous? Why am I the only one that is holy? And then they depart from the living God. You will not depart from the Lord. Even if you're a single Enoch in your community and all the other people are doing evil, you will not depart from the Lord. Even if you're the only Joseph there and all the other brothers, they hate the dream and the dreamer and, it's, and they hate you. Even in the midst of that hatred, you will not depart from the Lord in Jesus' name. You might be the only Caleb there that says, let us go in because we are able to overcome. You will not yield and you'll not succumb in Jesus' name. You might be the only Samuel in the midst of Ophni and Phinehas and they are doing evil. You'll keep straight and living, abiding with the living God in Jesus' name. You might be the only Daniel that they say they are going to cast into the uh, lion's uh, furnace, uh, lion's uh, den. But even then, you will not compromise. 
you will not depart from the living God in Jesus' name. There might only be three of you there, Shedra, Peshak, and Abednego, and then if Kadnesah is threatening you, saying, uh-uh, you're keeping a clean heart and a clean life, what if I throw you into the fire? Nebuchadnezzar will not intimidate you. Pharaoh will not frighten you. Herod will not make you tremble. You will not give up your faith in Jesus' name. You know, when people give up the faith, it is because of that evil heart in them. Look at that again. Look at that again. Verse 12, chapter 3 of Hebrews. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbeliever in departing from the living God. I will not depart from God. I will not depart from the ministry. Uh, you are not seeing it well. I will not drop the work of God. I will not go from light to darkness. I will hold on till the very end. The Lord give you abundant grace in Jesus' name. We're looking at Psalm 139, Psalm 139, I'm reading from verse 23, Psalm 139, verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart, is the heart, search me, O God, and know my heart, not my bragging, not my pride, it is not like, you know, I'm saying I'm self-confident, no, not that, my heart, my heart, search me, O God, and know my heart, Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. The Lord will lead you. He will not forsake you. He will not allow you to fall. You will not die by the wayside. I will not stop my journey halfway. I said I will not stop my journey halfway. The grace of God will see you through. Point number two now, the purifying of converted, prepared hearts. The heart is prepared, and the heart is already converted. The purifying of the converted, prepared heart. We're coming to Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It says, um, whatever local assembly you belong to, here is what's important. Whatever the name of the denomination you belong to, here is the important thing. And whatever time you came in, a new convert, an old timer, this is the important thing. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You see, there are people, they say, well, I'm pure pastor. My heart is pure. And we ask them, have you been to Calvary? I don't know about that, but I just know my heart is pure. Have you been forgiven? Have you been converted? Has the work of grace been done in your heart? Are you sure that Jesus Christ has taken you, he has washed you, he has cleansed you, he has turned your life around? He says, well, I don't know about that. I just know my, something is telling me inside me, I'm all right. Look at uh, Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. You cannot just be all right like that. How can you be cleaner without being cleansed? How can you be pure without being purified? How can you be saved without being forgiven? How can you say, I have everything it takes and you have never been to Calvary? Look at uh, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 12. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 12. It says, there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, but and yet is not washed from their filthiness. We need that washing. We need that cleansing. We need that conversion. We need that salvation. You cannot just say, I'm all right, I'm all right. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Look at uh, Proverbs chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 9. Proverbs chapter 20. Reading from verse 9. Who can say? Who can say? Who can say? I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sin. He has not, uh, you know, uh, got the grace of God. Who can say is clean? Who can say is pure? Without 
the blood of Jesus cleansing him and without the word washing him and without heaven touching his life and making him clean look at um, cha Micah chapter 6 Micah chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 11 Micah chapter 6 reading from verse 11 it tells us in Micah chapter 6 verse 11 it says shall I count them pure with wicked balances and with bags of deceitful weights there are traders I'm born again I'm born again I'm clean I'm holy I'm righteous I'm pure but they deceive when they are selling they tell lies when they are selling they have diverse weights and they deceive the people who are buying from them shall I count them pure it's a purity of heart when somebody is you know, getting money, getting gain by fraudulent means, by deceiving the people he's selling to or she's selling to, they will even swear, you know, I'm not making any gain on this. I swear by, then they mention what they are swearing by, and then they say, I'm just selling it to you because of this, because they don't understand the purity of heart goes with them to the market. Purity of heart goes with them to the office. Purity of heart goes with them everywhere. It's only when they come to church, maybe on Sunday, they say, praise the Lord. We're here again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I rejoice. I'm serving the Lord. Isn't it wonderful to belong to a church like this that is deeper, but it's not deeper in its office. It's not deeper in his place of work. He's a liar. He's a hypocrite. He's dirty all over. But it says, shall I count them pure with wicked balances and with bags of uh, deceitful ways? For the rich men thereof are full of violence. And inhabitants thereof are spoken lies. And their tongue is deceitful in their mouth. Therefore also will I make thee sick in smiting thee and making thee desolate because of thy sins. I pray the Lord will cleanse us through and through. Amen. Salvation is important. Conversion, very necessary. Peace of mind with a change of heart. That's the work of God's grace. And it is of his grace, of his power, through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ, that that cleansing will take place. And once that takes place, that is, you have repented, there is repentance. That is, the separation from the old life. You were doing that before, practicing that before. For you, money was, money just come in. Money, come in. Whatever the method, money, I need you. Whether you tell lies, whether you defraud, whether you cheat, whether you steal, whatever, let money come in. If you are now a child of God and your heart is cleansed and you are truly converted, all that fraud will vanish away. If any man be in Christ, somebody there is in Christ. He is a new creature. I said he is a new creature. In the market, a new creature. In the school, a new creature. While you are taking exam, jump exam, it's a new creature. And in your family, it's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Give me a good amen. amen. Am I talking about you? Amen. All things are passed away. And behold, tell me the rest. All things have become new. The waywardness of the past is gone. And past fraudulence is gone. A new life of righteousness has come. That's the work of the grace of God. The first work of grace. That's another thing. Second work of grace. Sanctification. The purifying of the heart of the true believer. The deeper cleansing of the heart. That's the provision of Christ for all believers at salvation. We are forgiven and set free from all outward external sins. Lying, external sin. Cheating, external sin. All the other bad, bad things we read about in the Bible, we shouldn't do as children of God. External things, 
But now, at sanctification, our heart is purified from inward sin and depravity. Look at um, the word of God. It tells us in Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3. We're reading now from verse, uh, reading from verse 3. Malachi, what chapter are we looking for? And what verse there? Chapter 3 and verse 3. Look at this. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. You will offer your service in righteousness. Your service will be rewardable. Your soul winning will bear fruit. And your running up and down will not be in vain. He will reward you here on earth. He will reward you in eternity. You will see God here. Anytime you have challenge, he will reveal himself unto you in Jesus' name. And when you cross to the other side, you will not die like an orphan. You will see the Lord in Jesus' name. But you know, we must allow him to purge us, purify us, cleanse us, sanctify us. And it says he will do that. Look at verse 4. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord. Your offering will be pleasant to the Lord. Because you bring it with a sanctified heart, a cleansed heart, as in the days of old, as in the former years. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, and we're reading from verse 9. Acts chapter 15, reading from verse 9. It says, and he put a new, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. You see, it's a matter of the heart. He purifies our hearts and he says, by faith, as we come to the Lord, we lay everything on the altar. We consecrate. There's no reservation. We're not holding anything back from the Lord. We're not saying, oh God, uh, this fire can go. I cannot go this other, uh, this other length. Christ weighs the whole length and he went so far for us to give everything is God for us and we say because of what Christ has done for us we lay everything we've got our skill, our talent our time, our money our ability everything we've got we just want to serve the Lord and thank God I see that dedication in you and I pray that that dedication will not uh, cease from our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, but where there's no purity of heart, where there's no uh, change of life, it's like, why did they do that? Why did they do that? And then there will be argument and argument. And I see people that don't argue with God. I see people that don't argue with leadership. The Lord is going to bless you. More than your prayers and more than your expectation, he'll bless every one of us in Jesus' name. It says, he put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. As we consecrate and lay everything on the altar, and then we pray for sanctification, for the purifying of the heart. He purifies us, he cleanses us, and blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We're looking at Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, we're looking at verse 14. Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from, how many iniquities? All iniquity, and purify, purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Zealous of good works. You will not be lukewarm. And you will not be dragging your feet. When the call comes or rise up immediately, your heart is purified. And you want to serve the Lord. Any opportunity that comes, I want to serve the Lord. And that's why we just you know, say yes every time to the service of the Lord. And it says with zeal, with 
passion, with desire, we serve the Lord. And it's because Jesus gave himself for us that he might redeem every one of us from all our iniquities and purify our hearts unto himself, a people zealous, peculiar people, zealous of good works. We're looking at First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, and we're reading from verse 14. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14. As obedient children, those who are purified, as who there, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to your former laws in your ignorance, but as he which has called you is holy. So be ye holy in how many things? In all manner of conversation, because it is written, be ye holy for I am. I am holy. It tells us in verse 18, for as much as she know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received well, by tradition from your fathers, but of the precious blood of Christ. That's what purifies us. That's what cleanses us. And then it goes on to say, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Look at verse 22. Seen ye have purified your souls. You see that? Purified on the inside. Purified in the soul. Purified in the heart. Purified in the mind. Seen ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned unpretending love of the brethren see that she love one another with say that aloud with a pure heart whatever we do you love do it with a pure heart you are kind do it with a pure heart you are compassionate do it with a, a pure heart you are considerate of other people do it with a pure heart you do unto others as you want them to do unto you do it with a pure heart and that is going to be what god will reward daniel chapter 12 in daniel chapter 12 here we're reading from verses 9 and 10 daniel chapter 12 reading from verses 9 and 10 and he said go thy way daniel for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end many shall be purified many shall be purified and made white and tried for the, but the wicked shall do wickedly. You see, the wickedness of other people should not disturb us, should not hinder us, should not stop us. The wickedness of other people should not make us to feel, maybe I cannot be pure, maybe I cannot be holy, maybe I cannot be transparently righteous. Because look at so and so, look at such and such, look at a community, and look at how wicked they are in the midst of those wicked people many shall be purified yeah. and you are part of that many yeah. i said you are part of that many yeah. no matter how dirty your community is you'll be part of the many that will be purified in jesus name yeah. and then it says none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand i will understand I said, I will understand. You'll understand in Jesus' name. Look at verse 3 now of that same Daniel chapter 12. And they that be wise, the wise shall understand. The wise shall understand. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness are the stars forever and ever. God bless you. Give that amen again. 
You see, the preachers who say nobody can be righteous, they don't turn anybody to righteousness. The, pe the preachers and the ministers, they go on their pulpit, they say, but you know what? Especially once you're married, and then you have to settle this with wife, and once you have children, and the children are like this, they're like that, they say nobody can be holy. Thank God we have righteous people here. Holy people here. Transform people here. And that grace of God in your life, everybody will notice and see in Jesus' name. He will reward you in eternity. Even here on earth, he will reward you. Because they that the wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many, your converse will not be few. I said your converse will not be few. They that turn many to righteousness will shine as the stars forever and ever. We're coming uh, now back to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5, uh, we're reading from verse 8. Matthew chapter 5, uh, reading from verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. For they shall see God. Many people don't understand that part of the promise. They think that we will be doing hide and seek over here on earth. But eventually when we die, we shall see God. Many people think we'll be at a crossroad here. And then God will never show himself to us. We cannot see God. They are praying. They don't understand. We shall see God in time of prayer. They don't understand that when enemies are chasing you, you will not see those enemies. God will drive the enemies away from you. You will see the Lord. He'll be mighty and powerful in every case of your life in Jesus' name. Some people don't understand. They shall see God means that in every area of your life, at any turning of your life, any condition of your life, you will see God. He will not leave you like an orphan. He will not leave you like a blind man just trying try to gamble through life. And then you cannot see God. You cannot see your path. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I want you to look at Numbers chapter 12. Numbers chapter 12. And I'm reading from verses 7 and 8. They shall see God. Numbers chapter 12. Seeing God. Seeing God. Numbers chapter 12. We're reading from verses 7 and 8. In Numbers chapter 12, verses 7 and 8, it says, My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, be and even apparently, and not in that speeches. Look at this. And the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Shall he behold. It says, Then, wherefore then, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Look at Deuteronomy chapter 34. They shall see God. You will see God. I said you will see God. Deuteronomy chapter 34. And we're looking at verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 10. It says, And there arose not a prophet since in Israel, like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew, tell me, face to face, face to face. They see God, number one, personally and spiritually. That's what happened to Moses. He saw God personally and spiritually. Number two now, we're coming to Exodus. Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24. We're reading from verse 7. Exodus chapter 24. Reading from verse 7, 24, 7. Here is what he's telling us in verse 7. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. Can we say that together? All that the Lord has said, we will do and be obedient. Can you say that again? Now I want you to look at verse 10. And they saw the God of Israel. 
and they saw the God of Israel. Once they made up their minds, they were going to be obedient. And everything the Lord had commanded them, they were going to obey. It says, they saw God, the God of Israel. When you're pure in heart, you will see God plainly and surely. Plainly and surely. Number three, we're looking at Numbers chapter 14. Numbers chapter 14, we're reading from verse 14. Numbers 14, 14, seeing God, seeing God. It says in uh, Numbers 14, verse 14, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land, for they have heard that thou, Lord, art among these people. He'll be among you. Amen. He'll be your family. Everywhere you are, he'll be with you. And that thou, Lord, art seen face to face. This is now for all of Israel. You are seen face to face. And that thy cloud standeth over them. And that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. Number three, you see God perpetually and sustainably. In a pillar of cloud, in a pillar of fire, continually, continually, from week to week and month to month and year to year, they saw God perpetually and sustainably. When you are pure in your heart, he will not leave you. He will be by you. He will be in front of you. He will be behind you. He will be everywhere. And whatever the challenge, you see him perpetually and sustainably. We are coming to Job chapter 33. Job chapter 33. We are reading from verse 25. Job 33. Reading from verse 25. It says in verse 25, His flesh shall be fresher than a child's flesh. I thought you'd say amen there. Yeah. He shall return to the days of his youth. Yeah. That means if you have been sick, you'll get well. Yeah. Tonight, you'll get well. Yeah. Your life is renewed. Yeah your body is renewed Amen. that's why and he goes on to say he shall pray unto God and he will be favorable unto him Amen. he shall see his face with joy Amen. that's talking about seeing God you've been having problems you've had some challenges and you're pure in heart you will see the Lord with joy Amen. For he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon them. If any man say, I have seen and perverted that which, is, uh, which was right, and he profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going to the pit. And his life shall see the light. When you appear in heart, you will see God presently and satisfactorily. He will come to satisfy you. Number five, look at Isaiah chapter 33. Isaiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 15. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 15. Seeing God. You'll see God. I said you will see God. And when you see him, all those problems are over. We're reading from Isaiah chapter 33, verse 15. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppression, shall, uh, that shaketh his son from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil, he shall dwell on high. The Lord will promote him. Amen. His place of defense shall be the munition of the rocks. Bread shall be given him. And his waters shall not fail. Amen. Look at verse 17. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. 
You see, the problem is, if you're pure in heart and you're living a righteous life, it says, then I shall see the king in his beauty. It shall behold the land that is afar off. You'll see the Lord promptly and swiftly. Promptly and swiftly. Anytime you pray, the Lord will say, here am I, here am I, and the blessings will come upon you. Amen. Number six, we're looking at Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22, and we're reading from verse 14. Acts 22, reading from verse 14. And he said, the God of our fathers has chosen thee. I am chosen. I said, I'm choosing. If you're sure, why don't you say that well? That choice will be approved of God, confirmed by God, and this work of God will prosper in your hand. The God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will, look at this, and see the just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. You will see God progressively and scripturally. You see, Paul the apostle was called, and when he was called, he saw the Lord on the way to Damascus from the point of conversion. And then he began to pray, and for three days he would not eat, and he had seen a visionary that Anas was coming. And eventually, uh, Anas laid us on him, his eyes were open, and Anas now said, this is just the beginning. You will continue to see the just one. So progressively, progressively, he'll continue to see. Scripturally, he'll continue to see. And do you remember? There was a time in his life he was taken to even paradise to see everything and to see the Almighty God. And then to come back here, the Lord will open the treasures of heaven to you. <laughs> Seeing the Lord progressively and scripturally. Number seven, we're looking at Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, we're looking at verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, follow peace with all men. Is that possible? Yes. Follow peace with all men. Can you do that? Yes. I say, can you do that? Yes. By the grace of God in your life, it will be done. Yes. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. You'll see the Lord peacefully and steadily peacefully and steadily all confusion in your life gone in jesus name and all the commotion and all the pressure all the tiredness and whatever and you know i don't know my way you'll know your way from today peacefully and steadily you will see the lord we're reading from acts of the apostles chapter 7 acts of the apostles chapter 7 I'm reading from verse 55. Acts chapter 7. We're reading from verse 55. It says in verse 55, But he being full of the Holy Ghost. You can be full of the Holy Ghost. Saved, number one. Sanctified, number two. And baptized in the Holy Ghost. Filled with the Holy Ghost and being full of the Holy Ghost. He looked up steadfastly into heaven. And he saw, you will see, and he saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, behold, I see the heavens opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. Remember, blessed are the pure in heart. Look at Stephen. His heart was pure. He has been saved, he has been sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost now, and looking up to heaven, he saw the glory of God, and he saw the Son of Man standing on his right hand side. And he said, Behold, I see, behold, I see. And look at verse 59. And he stood Stephen calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. You'll see the Lord painlessly and serenely. He just fell asleep and went to be with the Lord. You will not be on the other side. 
We are coming to John chapter 17. John chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 17 and verse 24. John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Verse 24. Father, I will that they whom also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that where it says you'll be with me where I am they'll be with me where I am that they may behold and see my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovedst me before the foundation of the world do you see that to see God on the final day and to behold him you see him then permanently and supremely permanently and supremely we're coming to Job chapter 19 Job chapter 19 blessed are the pure in heart what will happen for they shall see God I said blessed are the pure in heart what will happen for they shall see God we're coming to Job chapter 19 verse 25 for I know I know I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth and though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh, yet in my flesh, I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Now Job was speaking of seeing God, but prophetically. He was looking at the future. He says, I know my Redeemer liveth, and I know one of these days he will come. He will come, and then I will see him. Let me show you something. Chapter 42, Job chapter 42. Job chapter 42. I'm reading here from verse 5. Job chapter 42, verse 5. Are you there? Job chapter 42, what verse? Verse 5, I have heard thee by the hearing of the ear, but now, tell me, mine eye sees thee. He was thinking, you know, after I've died and the skin worms destroy my body, then on that final day, I will see my Redeemer. But God said, you will even see me now. You will see him now. And when God revealed himself to him, he was healed. Look at verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. As you come to the Lord, I will say, Lord, I want to see you even now. Even presently, I want to see you. You see that you're going to show up and you'll come with double blessing upon your life. Look at verse 12. Verse 12. For the Lord, the, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than is beginning for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she asses he saw the Lord you will see the Lord he saw the Lord pleasantly and suddenly pleasantly and suddenly he was thinking uh, it will be after death you'll see the Lord but pleasantly and uh, surprisingly and uh, suddenly he saw the Lord would you see the Lord today your circumstances you'll see the Lord and whatever you are going through you will see the Lord he will reverse every negative thing uh, out of your life in Jesus name in first corinthians chapter 13 first corinthians chapter 13 here we're reading from verse 12. first corinthians chapter 13 verse 12 it says for now we see through a glass darkly but then face to face the time is coming face to face now i know in part but then i shall know even as also i am known you see him perfectly and supernaturally Amen. then first john chapter 3 first john chapter 3 or reading from verse 1 first john chapter 3 verse 1 behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us 
upon me. I said upon me. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon you. That we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not. Because he knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when it shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall out aloud for we shall see him as he is we will see the lord peculiarly and selectively we'll see the lord he'll select us because we've been to calvary he'll select us because we're saved he'll select us because we're sanctified he's giving us pure heart and we'll say that because of that we shall see him even as he is and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God blessed are you as the Lord cleanses you perfects you purges you and purifies your heart you will see the Lord Amen. where are you I said you will see the Lord Amen. your confusion is gone Amen. darkness is gone Amen. problem at the crossroad is gone Amen. I don't know I don't know all that is gone Amen. I'm not sure, I'm not sure all that is gone. You will see the Lord. Rise up and tell the Lord. Look at the promise of the Lord. Look at the provision of the Lord. Blessed, blessed are the pure in heart. They shall see the Lord. You'll be among that number. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.